Welcome back, everyone, to another brand new episode of the Power of Conversation podcast. I'm your host, Evan Newton. And as always, you can get this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast, as well as the EVZN TV YouTube channel or the 95.3 WGUR The Noise website. You can get it in any one of those great places. Um, so, yeah, this is Power Conversation episode number nine. I'm kind of crazy to think this is already the ninth episode. Seems like yesterday we were just on number one. Um, but today I'm very excited to have our guest, Sean, a rising artist, um, on today for an exclusive interview. This is, I think, his first interview he's ever given. And he's been working very recently with guys like Heart Black, um, Joya. He's been working in the studio with Punk Nasty, Iceberg. Uh, he's, he's worked with... A good bit of people and he's got a very interesting story um from what i heard i came into this interview not knowing really that he had a backstory like he had um he actually released music under three different artist names uh so it's very he has a very very interesting story and i think you uh a lot of people can take this story and really learn from it or really um, relate to it as well so i'm very excited for y'all to hear this part and i say here because I do have some bad news. Um, fortunately, to this point, we've not had any major technical issues on the Power of Conversation, but I say to this point because in nine episodes, we finally had our first major technical problem. As you know, technology can be can be difficult. Um, and so the video file that we had, uh, because we do these podcasts on Zoom, um, it corrupted as soon as we got done uh, with the interview. So I apologize. There is no video component to this episode. Um, but I, I, with that being said, this is still going to be a great episode and it's still a great interview. And I highly suggest that y'all listen to it because Sean has a lot of knowledge. He's a very great guy, very great musician. And, you know, I mean... It's a podcast anyways. You don't necessarily need the video. Um, but yeah, man. Power Conversation Episode 9. Technical difficulties happen. I apologize once again. And uh, hopefully in the future that will not happen. But without further ado, Sean Interview. Run it. Welcome back to the Power of Conversation Podcast. This is episode number nine, and I am on today with Sean. How you doing, bro? Dude, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Just chilling, that's, you know? That's great. That's great. And you can get this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the EVZN TV YouTube channel. So, yeah, we are here with Sean, a brand new artist. Uh, maybe uh, I'm, brand new might not be the word for it, but um, he's recently popped up on the scene here in 2021 working with artists such as Heart Black and iceberg um so yeah before we get into all of that i want to know a little bit more about you who is sean um all right so sean as the world knows me now as the artist um <laughs> kind of came up in a name change last year 2020 and i said like i'm gonna i said i'm gonna come back to music and uh i started the whole music thing when i was probably 17 i think in high school okay Okay. Um, started as a complete like joke. There's two kids that made like SoundCloud music, whatever. So I was like, you know what? I got one of my, my homies, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna make music too, just messing around with it, right? And it was right. used to be like hardcore, like not hardcore rap or anything like that, but like it used to be like only about the rap, only about the rhymes, only about the, okay. the scheme stuff like that. Didn't know, didn't know anything about music. And then <laughs> I was like, then I started freestyling at parties, and I was like, yeah, I'm kind of good at this. So. I took it a little more seriously under the old artist name that I had, Shun, which is his, is his nickname that okay, yeah, some yeah, yeah. of my high school homies gave me. And then For sure. I kind of I kind of distanced myself from that, and I realized that, like, I, had, I was having some mental issues going on, to be honest. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be transparent in the podcast For sure. here. For sure. Um, For sure. For sure. So I had some mental issues going on, so I embraced more of a almost, I want to say, like, villainous type role. Okay. And like, right. I made the music a little darker, a little more revealing about myself under the name Hannibal. And then, Hannibal, okay. So I did that all on SoundCloud, all that kind of stuff. And then I was like, you know, like it's it, like it was me for a while. I grew out of that phase, 
and I was like, I just want to make music that tells me tells my story to also relates to it. So I was like, I'm gonna cut out the artist name. Like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go by uh, the fake name, the image or whatever it is. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go by my real name, but I'm gonna make it a little flair, which is the dollar sign, and start making music right. that I really want to make. Right. Right. Wow. So I actually didn't know that. Um, I had no idea that you had this whole story and I automatically assumed you were just this new artist on the <laughs> block or something nah, like I that. I mean, you could, you're not wrong to assume new because like new is basically new is when I really started actually putting effort into it. Right. And started right. doing being a little more clever with what I write, being a little more like the melodies. And actually first time I sang on a track was in the song, the only song I have out. I used to Fake just rap. Friends. Oh, yeah. is it fake friends oh yeah yeah fake okay. friends the only song i have out right now i have a bunch i'm sitting on but right right like you mentioned uh before the reason why i thought you were a brand new artist is because you had just the one song out on streaming platforms so i didn't know that there was this whole backstory with multiple different names um and that's really cool that's really cool um but despite all of these different names i want to know kind of how you got into music you know you said you started when you were around 17 uh, yeah. just chilling, chilling with the homies but uh, could you provide us maybe just a little bit more detail as to how you got into it yeah okay so uh 17 is really when I, I'll, I'll go back to the whole high school story of of sean of me bet it, bet um it. so basically we'll take back to i went to public school up until eighth grade and then i went to private school so okay. like i'm transferring schools with like a class above my own like, right, you know, right. more wealthier people, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I knew some people just because of like the community and stuff like that. And I was friends sure. with some people real close. I played soccer in high school, I played basketball in high school. So I was like, I was, I was pretty close with those kids, but you know, I kind of still felt like the whole outcast thing going on. Right. right. And I mean, like, not like people made me feel like that, but like, I mean, a couple people did, but like, you know, I, I'm always, I had a couple of nicknames in high school and one of them was King of Controversy just because I love getting in people's drama. It was, like, it was my thing. Oh, okay. I, I love, right. I just love, like, I used to love it more <laughs> than I do now, but I used to love just getting in people's business and just knowing that thing about them that, right, like, they don't right. know about me. But, anyway, moving on. So, I started doing, like, let's, let's say junior is when I really started popping more. Because okay. I, I was just right, 17. Right. I really started, like, people started, like, kind of messing with me more and, like, listen to music more or not listening to my music yet but like started messing with me more started like hang out with me more started getting invited to a lot of parties stuff like that so it actually started when i started freestyling at parties and i was just naturally good at it right so i was like right. okay but but um that was before that was, i was single so you know i was like impressing the girls okay. and stuff i'm not anymore yeah. so i can't right. say that but <laughs> um yeah so it was basically just that it was pretty much just impressing people all that kind of thing, and like, and then I got with one of my homies that didn't go to my school, but one of my, one of my best friends, and he said, "Yo, we should put a song out there." Okay. So I was yeah. like, I was, I was like, all right, but it was, it was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> it was horrible. But I feel was, like I've never, I've never heard of uh, someone say that their first song was like this great song anyway. So you're not alone. No, no, I definitely didn't get the industry plant vibe. It was definitely more of a. Uh, <laughs> uh trial and error experience it was terrible offbeat everything right. it was oh right <laughs> no editing too just raw vocals just <laughs> oh it was bad yeah yeah it happens but i mean yeah so then i started like messing with it i called out a couple kids that are actually pretty good at music actually iceberg was one of them we had this beef in high school right yeah so he was huh. he was one of them he's he's pretty good at music though and the whole thing right. and i mean obviously since then we squashed that that was yeah, just kind of high, sure. sc- high school drama stuff um and then probably my senior year i took on more of like a darker image because i realized that it actually helped me because like yeah all respect i love my family love my parents love my siblings i was not on purpose i was on the youngest of by 10 years i was an accident they don't really understand like the whole <laughs> yeah the generational difference yeah. going on <laughs> um, so i was pretty much just you know I was just like, all right, I'm going to put everything that I really think inside of a song so I don't have to, like, come off of people. Like, I was, I mean, angry thoughts, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, sad thoughts, all that kind of stuff. So um, I really started to make that on my own. Actually, in the Georgia College studio, 
in my freshman oh, year too. So that you okay. know, not okay. a lot to work with, but you know, I did right. I did it for what I could. <laughs> so in the, yeah. in the Georgia College Studio, I started there you doing go. some wow. stuff. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> and then sophomore year, or really like late freshman year and the whole sophomore year, I just stopped. I just took a break. And okay. I just my girlfriend came up here because I was then dating her. So my girlfriend is a year, she's a year younger than me. Um, so sophomore year she came up here, and uh, since she came up here, I really didn't like feel feel the drive to make music again until recently, when I hit up my boy Coleman White, who I went to high school with. Um, yes. You yes. know, you know Coleman. I do. I yeah, do. they hit up yes. Coleman, and he referenced me to uh, Punk Clay. Yeah, Punk Nasty. Shout out yeah. Punk Nasty, the the man who is really uh, behind all of this. Yeah, right? the the entire, and the entire Villageville music scene. And yeah. I hope to have him on eventually. I he do it, dude. I love, I love him. Love the kid. So I came, sure. went over there, made the first track, which I haven't released yet, but it's called Paranoid. It's gonna release soon. All right. All um, right. I met Hard Black, met Jay, met all those guys over there, and just started really like diving into the whole music thing. Now I try to go at least once a week. Um, awesome. awesome, for hours on end, just because like yeah. I felt it's like I fell back in love with it almost. Absolutely, and I'm glad to hear that you fell back in love with it because um, you definitely bring a lot to the scene, and, and and you know it just makes a lot more sense that you've had this background now that I'm just sitting here thinking about it because I, you know, no offense to any new artist that's out there, but. I, I was sitting here thinking this entire time that you were new, and I was like, there's no way this new artist is this good already. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, um, I appreciate you def- it. You definitely have some seasoning, and uh, I see that now. That's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. No, it's definitely, a really cool story. It's definitely like a lot of people don't know that, though. So a lot of yeah. people that I know up here don't know that at all. Right, right. Well, let's get back into more. Um, let's just kind of continue um with your backstory so where are you originally from uh well so technically i'm born in pittsburgh pennsylvania which wow. holds a lot of weight into my life yeah I'm, definitely. I mean, big sports fans big sports town that's right big, that's right i mean i'm wearing like the color of the gold right now so you can just <laughs> yeah. tell just the every, steelers gold yeah the yep. steelers gold is everything and yeah, but uh i only lived there until i was like eight then my okay. dad um Actually, my dad was in law enforcement. He came down to teach at Flutzy down in St. Simons Island. Right. So I moved there, and so I'm, that's where I was staying. So parents still live there, St. Simons Island, Georgia. All right. How about that? How about that? And how did you get to Georgia College? You mentioned you were making songs in the Georgia College studio. So how did you get here? Uh, so basically, I went to private school, and like, pri- like the private school people were real pushy about their college acceptance rate. So no matter what, uh, they're going to – as soon as you turn a senior, they're going to drill you about college. Right. So right. my GPA wasn't bad. I had like a 3-3. Three, three. So I was like, it's more of the thing like, you know what? I don't really want to go to a big school. I don't really want to go to UGA. Wouldn't even be smart right. enough to get in anyway. But, so, but Yeah, I felt I felt that. I'm the same way here. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do like the whole 150 people per lecture. Like I want to, cause yeah. I mean, like it's not me. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do the small school. So pretty much it was like my options were Georgia, Georgia College georgia state or uh georgia southern so i was like uh and i and uh kennesaw i did visit kennesaw with one of my friends right. i was like you know like atlanta's nice if you have some if you're looking for something to do it's a, a cool city great city but right. atlanta costs a lot of money so absolutely like even if you want something to do you can go to a braves game for like 80 bucks and yeah so it's wow so it's all that kind of stuff but so I visited Georgia College is the first school I visited, and I was like, you know, I, I like the vibe. It reminded me more of my not St. Simons, but my hometown where I grew up in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I like the vibe. I like that everything's pretty centralized. Um, nothing's too far from each other. I had some friends that went up here, so I was like, and then I was like, I'm too smart to go to Southern. Not no disrespect to Southern <laughs> or anything, but you know, I was like, I couldn't see myself finishing school at Southern. Like I just right. don't think I would. I'd be like, whatever, I'm dropping out. But uh, so yeah, I visited here. The only school I applied to, I got in early admission, and I just I just rolled with it. I just took that's awesome. that. I took that stress out of senior year of high school, and I was like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, Georgia College. Uh, anyone listening in the exec board, the front office there, um, definitely needs to sponsor the Power Conversation podcast. <laughs> Sean just gave. Gave you all a hell of a promo right there. Um, so, Georgia College, please sponsor us, especially if you're listening to us via WGUR 95.3, The Noise. 
um, as well as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, EVZ and TV YouTube channel. Um, so did you ever, are you still in school here technically as a student? Did you graduate? No, nah, I'm still in school here as a student. Okay. What's um, your major? Uh, marketing. Nice. A marketing yeah, major. There you go. See, we made a whole marketing pitch right there. <laughs> right there, see? <laughs> I'm looking for the marketing jobs out there. Nah, there but, you go. <laughs> nah, but yeah, I went business route. I was actually a comp sci major as soon as I joined college, and I just I did it for I think two weeks. I was about, <laughs> I was about four months behind other kids. <laughs> like yeah, was, right, right. That I was just, like, that's, that's it. I'm out. I'm going business, and I'm just yeah. not gonna. I'm gonna chill all day. <laughs> that doesn't. That doesn't sound too fun. No, nah, not yeah, a chance. For sure. For sure, for sure. So let's get back into um, Sean now, the current music state that you are in. So you dropped Fake Friends officially on February 15th with Iceberg. So, yeah. so you kind of explained before working with Clay, getting into that. So how did that whole song come about um, when you finally decided that you were going to return the music? How did the whole process just kind of work out in, in, uh, in detail? Um, okay, there's there's some levels to it actually. Um, okay. So I told I've been telling my girlfriend for the whole last semester actually, because I mean realistically it came about Christmas break, is when I did the song, worked on it, and just held on to it for a little while. But the whole last semester I was like, man, I'm starting to miss music a little bit. But I didn't want to come back with like, I didn't want to come back with something that wasn't authentically me. Yeah. Right. Like, because I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of artists. Like, I mean, Eminem was the whole inspiration for my beginning music okay. career. Okay. Because I was like, you know what? But the, the I, I noticed more and more that I don't listen to Eminem on a daily basis because it's not me. It's not who I am. Right. So I found myself listening to actually Machine Gun Kelly's newest album, Tickets to My Downfall, and Juice World. Just a lot of Juice yes. World so I was and Kid yes. Leroy and all those kind of people because, like, Sure, they can be labeled as hip hop rap, but you can't really put them in a category, exactly. Because they're exactly in a, right. they're kind of in their own sound and their own wavelength, stuff like that. And I always kind of felt I'm not going to compare myself to them by any means, because right, yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not going to throw the <laughs> ego out there, but yeah, yeah, you know the the influence is more from them. And I was like, okay, now I want to, like, I found I was like, I need to find a beat because I just need to. If I find a beat, I'm motivated to do it. So yeah. I was like, all right. right. I found a beat, and I hit up, uh, actually, the the producer of Fake Friends is Fortune House. Well, Fortune now. He used to go by Fortune House. Just right. goes by Fortune now. It's my boy in, uh, back home. Okay, and, okay. Uh, I hit up, because I've been hitting up uh, Iceberg for a while, and I was like, yo, we gotta, I want to work on something. Like, we got to work on something together. And then we did. Right. We came out with that one. Um, yeah, and it it's actually given the fake friends title because i wasn't sure what i was going to put there uh, the whole the whole like genre until right. an event happened right beforehand like probably like a week there a week beforehand um you know some some stuff happened with a close friend of mine and i was like yeah that's the one gotcha gotcha wow Wow, that's that's kind of crazy how you managed to come up with that well, within the week before you even put it out. That's kind of crazy. The hook, yeah. Crazy. The hook was, yeah. the hook came back. We we're like, all right, we gotta put that down, and that was it. For sure, for sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so how did how did you get in the studio though with Clay? Like, how did you reach out to him? I, how did that? How so did that I reached out? out to Coleman when I got back after Fake Friends came out and i was like i'm gonna need a producer everywhere i'm gonna need a producer like that i can definitely like rely on all the time because the thing with fortune is i love the kid i love the guy uh, right. great producer but he does do his own music right. and clay right. also does clay's in a band but um i need someone like available in case you know i want to record something right away i want to drop something right away i need something to be like somebody to be available that same week and right there's a lot of stress on Fortune. He's going to release an EP. You know, he's got a bunch of stuff going on. So I was like, I, like I said, I love them. I work with them again. But I didn't want him to – I also didn't want to travel that three and a half hours. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just to work on a song and, like, work on one and then leave again and come back, all that kind of stuff. So I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a producer up here that I can work with weekly, work with a bunch of different stuff, and then uh, hit my boy Coleman – and it was like, 
yo, like, do you know any producers? Um, all that kind of stuff. And he was like, yeah, this, I know a producer. He sent me Clay's uh, a, a song Clay did and then sent me, you know, his Snapchat or whatever. Right, right. So I hit him up. I was like, yo, I want to work. Like, I'm, I want to work. I came, came by that same week. I uh, saw his whole setup. Really saw his vibe. It's legit. It's legit. It's a legit setup. For it those is. who don't know, it's legit. <laughs> it is. He's got everything there. Everything you can imagine. All the little toys, everything. Right. Right. Ah, uh, yeah. So I saw his setup, and I was like, all right. He knows what he's doing. And he was just, like, he was cool. He was really cool. So I was like, all right, let's work on let's work on the track then. And we, uh, we worked it. We threw it down right there. And he said... Uh, he, I mean, he just constructive feedback, stuff like that. Try doing this, try doing this. Uh, are you cool with this? I said, yeah. Right. And then he's like, have you met any of these guys yet? And named like Jay, Hart, Black, DK, all these guys in the military right. area. And I was like, I, I don't know them. I was like, I have no wow. idea. Wow. No idea wow. who they are. So then, um, you know, I get, a, I get an ad on Snapchat when I leave from Jay and from Hart, Black. I'm like, right. okay, so Clay's, wow. Clay's putting the music out. Like, Clay's, like, putting out some it's networking. music. Yeah, he's networking yeah. for me. And I was like, bet. So, I, you know, I talked to Heart Black a little bit. And I don't know if you've heard the song Mine yet. I definitely have. Yeah, and that's Definitely so have. He hit me, and he's like, yo, like, let's do a song. We kind of just went back. We, went, we both went to the studio. And, yeah, it was mine. That's what came out of it. Yeah, that's it. And... You know, everyone that I've met over at that studio has just been purely genuine from, you know, from Jay to Heart Black, Clay, DK, all of them. Yeah. Super genuine people. And, you know, it's very rare to find something like that, um, especially in an area kind of like Milledgeville. Yeah, um, especially we, especially yeah. in the music industry as a whole. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, definitely. To find people that are there to actually, like, mutually, mutually benefit and to, like, just work all together on a collaborative thing, it's, it's a rare... It's a rarity. Everyone usually has an ulterior motive, and that's right. It doesn't that's end right. up well, but it's a beautiful thing. It's it a beautiful is a thing for sure, know. for sure, for sure. Diamond in the rough here, in Georgia. Diamond in the rough. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Um. So yeah, those are the two songs that you have out right now. You have "Fake Friends" with Iceberg, and then you are featured with Heart Black on mine. Um. Could you kind of give us maybe a little glimpse as to what the future is? Do you have any projects that are coming? Or... I have. I have are probably four in my phone right now already done. So. Oh wow. I the first song that I keep mentioning, alluding to, is "Paranoid," uh, produced by Punk Nasty. Um, you know, it's it's a solo track. It's me and but it's it's a vibe. It's a vibey song. It feels it's definitely feels good. You can just sit in your car, listen to it. Uh, but right. it does have it does have the more sad tone to it, like a lot of the music. Um, yeah. And then I have recently. I don't know if you saw in Heart Black story, him singing "Leaving." Uh, Leaving. I've not seen that one yet. I have not seen it. We we just worked on it, so it's my song featuring Heart Black. Leaving. Okay. Um, definitely. Definitely, that song is influenced by someone in my life, and I don't know if they listen to the podcast, but if they do. They know who they are. Okay. And, okay. <laughs> Um, hopefully they will listen to the yeah, podcast. Hopefully, hopefully. hopefully they listen. Hopefully. <laughs> they listen. hopefully they listen. Yeah, I know. Um and yeah, I got I'm a featured as just the hook in a song with Jay and a song with a uh, Heart Black in it. And right. yeah, so it's there's a lot of stuff just piled up right now that I have to set out in order to put out and I have to feel which one I want to put out. Right, for sure. For sure. That's awesome stuff right there. That's awesome stuff. So with all of this all of the past music that you had in the past, what you have right now, and then what you have in the future, what do you wish to accomplish with your music? Do you want to reach out to other people? Do you want to make it for yourself? What is the ultimate goal in your music? Well, I mean, I think as like a, the person I am, I make it more for myself and for like, because I can't say, there's a lot of things that I can't say to people, and there's a lot of things that I like, I'm kind of bad at showing my feelings to certain people, like to like a lot of people. Right. Um, and when I, like I, like I said, I'll go into more detail about the whole friend thing, the one the yeah. reason fake yeah. friends and the whole like, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Um. So, you know, had a had a friend put my trust in for probably three years, right? 
Yep. Everything, you know, growing friendship. One day, cut off. One day, just that's all it took. Wow. Didn't even know I did anything wrong. Whatever. I moved wow. on, right? Well, I, I I didn't. I mean, I didn't initially move on. Now I don't really care. But right. you know, that's the inspiration for songs like Leaving, for songs like Paranoid, and the hook for Fake Friends. It's it's from that. It's it's uh. I I didn't handle it well. I mean, like, you yeah. know, freaked out a little bit, whatever. But no, so it's the hope to accomplish is like that I'm not only talking to myself that like I'm venting almost like a therapy session, yeah. but I also want people to realize that like things like bad things do happen to good people. And even if like, like I'm not going to say I'm the greatest person in the world, I'm not going to say I'm a role model, but bad right. things do happen to great people. So I agree. I agree. Like if something comes about it and something bad happens to somebody, then like, don't freak out about it. Like it's, it is what it is. You know, it's, you can vent in your own certain way. Some people freak out. Some people, you know, eat ice cream or whatever. Um, but you know, I, that's, I mean, the goal overall is to, you know, reach out to people, make them realize they're not alone. And also like, you know, I kind of want to shake labels up a little bit. I think that the whole label thing and the yeah. industry plan thing is a little is a little shady. I think it's a little, like, you know, I don't like the way they do things a lot. I don't like the whole that we can loan you money and take it back if we show for you. But yeah, right, right. You know, I agree with that. I mean, that being said, if I got signed tomorrow, probably taking it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that you know, it is what it is. I don't, I don't think that. I think the independent artists need to kind of show that they don't need a label, and I think it's a dope way to do it through distributors and stuff like that. So. Oh, definitely, definitely. I love this whole the whole independent artist takeover mentioning on that point um, because you know the up until up until like 2013, 2014, 2015 around there, it was really all label led and as far as the industry goes, and yeah. the revelation of SoundCloud, and then now with you know, Apple Pod, I mean, not Apple Podcasts, but you can get the podcast on Apple Podcasts, <laughs> but um, with Apple Music, Spotify, having the easy accessibility with uh, distributors. Yeah, having um, DistroKid, yeah, I mean, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, right, personally, right. I know I use my music through DistroKid, and I just put it right. up there, it distributes to all platforms across the world. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. whether you're whether you're like a 17 year old with Apple Music, or you're a 45 year old with like an Amazon, like it, right. you can listen right. to myself anywhere. So yeah, yeah, it makes a lot. It makes it easier to play into the artist's hands. I mean, you right. saw that with like songs like uh, "Old Town Road," for example. Oh yeah, definitely. That's a, that was a re- that was a release by him. So that's right. All and the, a, um, all the profits you know, he made from it that is, they were his. That's right. That's right. You know the story behind that, like where Nas came from, like kind of the backstory. It's kind of an interesting one. I, I kind of want to want to share it here while we're kind of talking about it. If everyone didn't know, so Lil Nas X is actually a student at West Georgia. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. Yes, at West Georgia, and he made Old Town Road in his dorm room, and then put it out, like you said, through DistroKid, um, and, and it blew up. I mean, it's really? it's crazy, and that's what I, I mean. I tell people this all the time. People ask me, "Why am I working with all these artists? Why am I working with you know people that are so small scale?" It all it only takes one hit. I mean, that's it takes thing. one good song. I, said, I said and it to goes. everyone. It takes. I mean, I'm pretty sure Lil Nas's record deal was 14 mil. I mean, up which front is insane for yes. the one song that yes. he did. Nuts. Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's a lifetime, realistically. Right. That's absolutely. You can walk away with that. That's a hundred years. A hundred forty grand for a hundred years. I don't know about yeah. you. I'm not living a hundred more years. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not breaking I'm not the either. record. No. That's <laughs> so right. I'm like, not either. <laughs> so like you can live yeah. comfortably on that for the rest of your life, and absolutely, it's one song. You don't know, that's especially it. with the evolution of like social media and TikTok now that TikTok uses yeah. sounds like one yeah. song. One song pops. It's over. Yep, TikTok's such a game changer now, and it, it was YouTube before, still kind of is, but TikTok now, and who knows what it could be next. So Yeah, for independent um, artists, I think TikTok was probably the biggest thing to happen in the last 10 years. Yeah, for sure. Cause it's for sure. Just, even over SoundCloud, though? Even over SoundCloud, you really think so? Um, It's weird, because I think I think so, but the reason I think so isn't because like the quality of music. I think that... Okay. 
like there's a lot of people that like made their name on SoundCloud and I mean the Post Malone and people like that, but I think that like the way SoundCloud is is it's unlikely to find like a real good song that isn't like sponsored isn't really like a sleeper or whatever. Right. I mean, all right. it takes is one person to find that song, but you know, if if you're asking me if I'd rather have somebody listen to my song on SoundCloud that's kind of famous or like Charlie D'Amelio dance to my song on TikTok, I'm having Charlie D'Amelio dance to my song yeah, on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I know absolutely. Because that's a gar- that's almost a guaranteed bag and <laughs> record right, deal, like that's right. right there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> like, yeah, that's for sure. That's a that's a very interesting take. I'm glad uh, glad you mentioned that for sure. So I guess I only have one more question for you, and I, this is a bit more of a personal question. Um, we've mentioned the whole story now with music, but of course you've decided to return. Um, you've mentioned that you've had mental health issues in the past. Um, so how important has music been to help with those, and how have you progressed as a person since returning to music? Oh uh, man, so man, music's done. Music's changed my life. Like music, I, like it's it's cliche and corny to say that, but it has like. Um, before that, before the whole music thing, I was a, you know, high school, I cared about sports, getting girls, didn't really care about grades or anything like that. So, music, like, stepping into the music thing, and it's, like, I've always been a kid that, like, kind of, you know, can't really talk to my parents, I love my parents to death, they're great, you know, great people. Right. I, they don't even know I made music. That, wow. Yeah, they don't even know I make music, especially the scale wow. that I make it. They have no idea. Um, that's just because, like, they, I don't think they'd understand, which is fine. Like, it, it is what it is. I don't care. Um, right. They'll know, you know, once I'm more involved and once I'm, like, you know, out there more and once I'm putting out a bunch of music, I'll, I'll probably tell them. I'll, I'll stop yeah. caring as much. But, yeah, they don't know, um, which is kind of weird because a, a lot of people actually ask me that. Like, why yeah. don't you tell them? And it's yeah. like, it's just, like, one of those things that I'm just, like, it's never come up. And I think it's more of, like, the – my parents are, like, like I said, I always – I'll keep saying I love them because I do. They are old, a little bit older, and they're a little bit yeah. less understanding, a little bit more judgmental. Love them to death. They don't yeah. really understand Yeah, me, no, but... I, I, under, I understand. I definitely yeah. understand that. <laughs> yeah. I definitely do. So it's – um, but music's done pretty much – I was always too proud to go to, like, a therapist or anything like that. Cause I was always too yeah. like, like I don't need that. Like I'm, I'm right. okay. I'm good. And then I found yeah. myself really sitting in probably sitting in my bed one night. It's a real story. I'll I'll tell it. I don't care. Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Girl, I'm hella interested in. Probably I'm probably 18. So this is like when I'm actually making music like about my feelings about stuff like that. So girl, probably when I'm 18, before I date, dated my current girlfriend. Um, just want to clarify that just in case so i don't get in trouble yeah later. <laughs> um, but yeah can't get in trouble can't yeah, do it can't do it so before i i date my current girlfriend i'm talking to this girl and she basically you know talks to me as more of her therapist and like somebody that cares for her than like goes sleeps with a dude you know comes back says she made a mistake all that kind of i got it I, and that happened to me i've been cheated on three times like actually in a relationship cheated on three times. Wow. One after the wow. other, which is nuts to me. But that's, I mean, that's, oh, I hate that. That's why I say bad things happen to good people because like that was when I was way better a person than I am now. Right. Um, right. But yeah, cheated on three times, and like get I mean, people ask like you know why? Wow. Why is your music sad? What I've, I've been through a lot. You know, I'm only 21, yeah. but you know, I've been through. Wow. I've been through heartbreak a couple wow. times. So. Yeah, I basically just said like, you know, whatever. Like, music's gonna be my kind of crutch, and then I I lost myself for a while when I stopped making music, and I realized that I stopped making music, that I stopped really controlling who I was, because, you know, I wanted to be like, I mean, back back when I was making music at the Georgia College Studio, I was like, I'm gonna I want to open for Rolling Loud, I want to open for I want to open for Music Midtown, I want to do all this stuff. Like I want my song to be on a, like a, on people's playlist, all that kind of stuff, but I never like reached out to like a real producer. I never really took it seriously enough, so I, was, I stopped and I was like, you know what? I can go the whole my whole life without this music thing. And then I realized I was just I was lying to myself. I was wow. like, you know, like I need it. It's like it's part of me now, and it's 
I I've always told my friends that I and like my girlfriend and my family that I think everyone's born with a, like a natural gift. I think I think like like yours for example is creativity. Like I'm like you do yeah. music videos for everybody. You do the podcast. You do everything. Like mine, I think is just music. Like if someone throws on a beat, I can freestyle to it no matter what the beat is. And that's awesome. You know, I've like, I've, I mean, yeah, I'm like a pretty athletic person. Not, but I was never the most athletic person. I know. Right. So I was like, that's right. not. I was like, that's not the gift. Like that's that's not yeah. it. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll X that one out. And move on. So I was like, okay. Um. And then I just realized that like, you know, no matter who's in the room. I'm always going to try to elevate myself to be the best musician in that room. No, Absolutely. Like, no matter what, like, it, I mean, hard black, phenomenal musician, Jay, phenomenal musician. And, right. But I'm always going to try to be better than them. Yeah. And like I said, yeah. and there's times that I'm not, and there's times yeah. that like, you know, they, they can kill me on a track, but there's also yeah. times where like I am. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I think, for sure. I think as a musician, you have to have that kind of ego. That you have to be, you have to go in being like, I have to be the best, no matter right. what, because right. I mean that sets the bar and that sets the level. So you know, music to me, it's, I mean, it's therapy. It's, it's something that I realize that like it's no longer something I do. It's not a hobby. It's like it is me now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I, you know, I have a very similar story too. You know, I've, I've gone through a good bit myself. Um, and I've realized, you know, what I do here with both music videos, pod, and podcasting, um, has you know, it's just really been who I am. You know, I've embraced who I am with that. Um, so that's very important. I'm glad you uh, touched on that. So, without being said, um, any shout outs you want to shout out to anybody right now that you haven't shouted out or shout them out again or you know I'm gonna shout out Heart Black, I'm gonna shout out Jay, I'm gonna heart I'm gonna course. shout out Punk, all yes. those all those guys there. I'm gonna shout out my girlfriend because, you know, without her, that's I don't it. know where I'd really be. Um That's it. That's it. Uh I'm gonna shout out you know, the the person that gave me the inspiration of the song. Like you might have like kind of screwed me over but it's all right you gave me the inspiration to all the music i make now so there thank you, you for that you know <laughs> whatever yep yep <laughs> yeah all right but yeah man that's, that's pretty much it it's been a good time though. that's it dude yeah this has been this has been an excellent episode of the podcast i appreciate having you on bro um and you know hopefully we'll have you on evz and tv uh on more soon maybe I'll, really soon i'll be hey, so, anywhere you know awesome I'll always awesome. make time for it of course, of course. Why? Well, I appreciate you being on, bro. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Hey, you too, man. Thank you for listening to The Power of Conversation. If you like what you heard, give this video a thumbs up. Or if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, be sure to give us a positive rate and subscribe. Once again, thank you for listening to The Power of Conversation, an EBZN TV production. We'll see you next time.